Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope this video finds you doing very, very well today. If you don't mind, I would very much like to share with you just some general thoughts and reactions and impressions that I have with respect to a recent announcement regarding certain films that are planned to be released in May 2020 from the Criterion Collection. Before I continue, my friends, let me say that my presentation will be based on reliance on this iPad, which is of the Criterion website itself. So my suggestion, however, is because of the low quality presentation of my video, my suggest that you take a look directly at the Criterion website for high quality pictures of the cover art designs, as well as further detailed descriptions of the films themselves, as well as the special features that accompany each of these planned releases from the Criterion collection. Uh, so uh, the site will be uh, uh, indicated in the description box of this video so uh, you can just click on that and take a look directly at the Criterion website but what I have here is the release that's planned for May 5th 2020 and this is a very interesting release this is spy number 342 and I should be very clear about this because this is a box set and the box set itself is uh, given the spy number 342 which with each of the films included in the set also being assigned their own respective spy numbers this is Eric Romare's six moral tales coming to blu-ray May 5th 2020 this is very significant because as some of you may know this set already existed in the Criterion Collection under Spine 342 for the box set, plus additional spine numbers for each of the films within the set, in a DVD form box set, which I have right here. It was a great box set, really packed with a lot of information about these films, which were really great from a filmmaker who was really great, Eric Romare. However, this set fell out of print some time back. And so for a number of years, I think many people were essentially lamenting the fact that this was no longer available through the regular commercial distribution channels of the Criterion Collection and otherwise. And so uh, it was a real shame. And for some time, I think people, I think quite rightly so, were uh, asking for this to come back, hoping for this to come back, putting this on wish lists, uh, keeping fingers crossed that maybe it would come back one day. And lo and behold, what do you know? It seems like Criterion has given us a little bit of a Valentine's Day gift, a little kiss as it were, because now we have this set returning to the Criterion collection, which is wonderful news indeed. Really, really wonderful. Uh, just to be very quick, let me say that the films included in the set are The Bakery Girl of Monceau, Suzanne's Career, My Night at Maud's, La Collectionneuse, Claire's Knee, and Love in the Afternoon. And it looks like the um, it looks like the the f the features here seem to be the same, except let me just uh, point out a few things here that I think might be of interest. So the Blu-ray on the Criterion website, or the Blu-ray as described on the Criterion website, indicates new 2K digital restorations with uncompressed monoral soundtracks. So these uh, DVDs are indicated as being new restored high definition digital transfers. So the fact that this is new, it says new 2K digital restorations, which indicates to me that we are talking about new uh, restorations for this 
particular Blu-ray release. Uh, we'll have to see exactly what it looks like when the Blu-ray comes uh, in May, so we can do a little bit of a comparison, of course. But uh, the description is different, so it seems like we are talking about uh, something quite different indeed, so it's something to look forward to. It also indicates that the Blu-ray set will be a three-disc box set, which is, of course, different from this DVD set, where we have each of the films given um, its own disc. And let me just see. So, as you can see right here, whoops, sorry about this. As you can see right here, the, the films are all on their own discs. So you have six discs total, and then you have two separate booklets right here, which I'll talk about in a second. So it looks like the actual presentation for the Blu-ray will be a little bit more compact. And so it says three discs for the Blu-ray set. So my assumption will be that it might come down to something along the lines of maybe two films a disc, something like that. Um, so uh, probably yes. So, But again, we'll have to check that and uh, make sure uh, that that's the case. And perhaps for the films that have a shorter running time, if they're on the same disc, then my guess is that, therefore that maybe most of the supplements will be included on the disc with the films that have the shortest running time of the six films. Uh, but that's my general guess of that. But we'll have to see when the Blu-ray comes out in May. Um, but that should be nice and compact and uh, going from there. And then going on with the list with the, uh, the special features as indicated on the Criterion website, we have a conversation between director Eric Romero and filmmaker Barbara Schroeder uh, from 2006, which mirrors what's on the DVD set. And then we have four short films by Romer. Presentation, or Charlotte and Her Steak, and Veronique and Her Dance, uh, Nadia in Paris, uh, in Paris, and A Modern Coed, and one which he advised called The Curve. And this is also mirroring what's on this particular DVD set as well, so uh, that's good. And then we have En Pascal, which is a, a 1965 episode from the TV series, uh, educational TV series, En Profil dans le Texte, directed by Romer, and this is also included on the DVD set, so this is a carryover. And then we have archival interviews with Romer and with uh, the actors and film critics and producers, which are also uh, coming from uh, this particular DVD set. Um, I'm assuming that all the DVD archival interviews here will be carried over. It sounds like it is. And then we have a video afterward from uh, 2006 by filmmaker and writer Neil Labute. And so there we go. Yeah, this is also uh, something that we find from the DVD set as well. And then trailers. And then we have a booklet uh, featuring critics uh, talking about the uh, talking about the work as well as um, uh, the essay from 1948 by Romer, which is called For a Talking Cinema, along with an English translation of Six Moral Tales, the book of stories by Romer on which the films are based. So I should mention here that the booklets in question for the DVD set are like this, and the Six Moral Tales writing, uh, the stories uh, for the basis of the films, is in this big booklet, which is a really nice, nice read. Then we have this, which is on six, on the six moral tales itself, which is the sort of critical appraisals of the films. And it looks like, like based on the brief description given on the Criterion website, it looks like everything that is in this particular booklet for the DVD set will be carried over into the Blu-ray set. It looks like because of the the authors that are mentioned, yes, it looks like every author that's mentioned uh, here in the Blu-ray set uh, description is also featured as being an author for an essay in something that's featured in this DVD set. It looks like I'm just doing a quick double check here. And yes, it looks like that's the case. And so the question therefore remains is because of the way that the Blu-ray set will be compacted, compared with this bigger DVD set. The question is, will the booklet be, for the Blu-ray set, be one compact booklet, 
or will it be in two separate books like we have with the DVD set? Only time will tell and uh, uh, we shall see. Again, uh, with Blu-rays uh, sets from DVD sets, what often happens is that because the size is uh, pared down, oftentimes that also means that the packaging materials will also be reduced accordingly or proportionally. So uh, we can probably expect something similar along those lines, but let's see how that affects the actual booklet itself. Now, going back to the set itself, I think this is very significant news because, as I said before, this was or this is an OOP DVD set. So at the moment, you cannot get this through regular distribution channels. So this is really great news indeed. It reminds us, of course, of other past DVD sets that had fallen out of print or had otherwise become unavailable, but then subsequently became Blu-ray sets later down the line, and we've seen this rather recently. So this uh, this seems to be a continuing that trend in the Criterion Collection uh, quite uh, quite wonderfully. So uh, perhaps this might be a continuation of some kind of trend, which means perhaps that maybe in the future we might see other uh, past out of print DVD box sets come back into the Criterion Collection. Of course, fingers crossed. But in the meantime, my friends, we do have the return, the triumphant return of this wonderful set. And it'll be my pleasure, uh, hopefully one day, if I have the opportunity, to be able to talk more in de detail about the specific films that come in this uh, really uh, wonderful, beautiful set, which is called Eric Romare's Six Moral Tales. Next, scheduled for release on May 12th, 2020. This is Spine 1027. The director is John Sturges, and the film is from 1963, The Great Escape. Uh, I should just, before I forget, just point out this cover art by Sean Phillips. Very striking cover art for this film. It's a, an approach that I wouldn't have guessed it it gives the uh, it gives more darkness and nighttime and a little bit of a sinister aspect of this film, uh, which I think is a really interesting and in many ways a unique way of looking at or, or representing this film in the uh, in in the form of cover art. So uh, really interesting. I love the the font and the use of the barbed wire as well. It's very evocative and, and quite a, uh, quite a vivid image. And, of course, we have the, the head here, which is uh, Steve McQueen, of course, uh, regarding this film, The Great Escape, uh, which is a kind of a, a really enthralling work of entertainment. And it's uh, very absorbing. And even to this day, I think it, it really operates uh, quite remarkably well as a kind of almost epic form of entertainment uh, that is... You know, always uh, quite harrowing and very suspenseful and and uh, at uh, uh, ever engaging. So uh, this is the great escape. Now, uh, this is labeled as being a new release in the Criterion Collection Blu-ray and DVD catalog, and indeed it is. So uh, this is really great. Incidentally, this I think had been rumored uh, some months back, and so this isn't a total surprise, although. It is still nice to see this film in the Criterion Collection all the same, of course, don't get me wrong, it's a really great announcement. This isn't exactly new to the Criterion Collection, however, because for those of you who know, However, I should say that this film isn't exactly new to the Criterion Collection as a whole, because for those of you who know the Laserdiscs, you will know that this film actually had been a Criterion Laserdisc back in the day, under Criterion Laserdisc spine number 95, which is right here, The Great Escape. A wonderful presentation, and we have the inside opening up like this. So a really great presentation and it really, especially the inside uh, uh, layout here, it really therefore makes one quite uh, curious 
and excited for what we have in store, what the Criterion design people have in store for us with respect to what design goodies they plan to include in the booklets and, and the like for The Great Escape here for the Blu-ray. But uh, this is the, the fact that uh, this has been uh, a film, or this is a film that has a connection with the Criterion Collection uh, from days gone by, and this is the Laserdisc proof of that. Uh, so uh, this is a film that isn't necessarily new to the Criterion Collection as a whole, but of course it is a new Blu-ray DVD. Uh, so in that sense, this is a wonderful announcement because it is another film that was in the Laserdisc catalog that has now been so-called upgraded from a Laserdisc to a new uh, DVD or Blu-ray under Spine 1027. So really, really great. And I should say for the special features that are indicated on the website, we have 4K digital restoration with uncompressed monorail soundtrack on the Blu-ray. And then alternate 5.1 surround soundtrack presented in DTS HD Master Audio for the Blu-ray. And then we have two commentaries, which is interesting. Uh, one from 1991, featuring director John Sturges and composer Elmer Bernstein. The other from 2004, uh, featuring actors James Colburn, James Garner, and Donald Pleasance. So I should mention that to, So we have these two commentaries, 1991 and then 2004. The 1991 commentary seems to be the same commentary track that was made available on this Criterion Laserdisc. Uh, the Great Escape. And so if it is indeed the same con commentary track, and I believe it is, then that is really wonderful news because this is a, a, a fine commentary track and I'm glad that it's it's going to be included. So it's, that's really great. And then we have the, uh, the actor commentary track from 2004. And then there's a new interview with critic Michael Sragow about this film. And uh, it's really, that's good because Michael Sragow, as you know, has provided many commentaries, uh, many supplementary information on past Criterion releases. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that he will have much great things to say uh, and a lot of information to present in this new interview. And then there is a four-part 2001 documentary called The Great Escape, Heroes Underground. Um, and so, uh, well, great inclusion here as well. Plus another 2001 program, this time called The Real Virgil Hiltz, A Man Called Jones, and uh, the, which is the uh, United States Army Air Force pilot David Jones, the inspiration for Steve McQueen's character in the film. And then we have Return to the Great Escape from 1993, and then a trailer, plus an essay by critic Sheila O'Malley. And then I said the cover art being designed by Sean Phillips, as you see right here. So this is, as I said, something that had been rumored or had been somewhat announced earlier. I think it was through a newsletter clue. Um, but so this is an, a total surprise, but this is nice to see, incredibly nice to see, because as I said before, I think this is such an enthralling, suspenseful, entertaining work. And also it's a film that is yet another Laserdisc title that is being upgraded into the DVD Blu-ray catalog. And anytime we see one of those, my friends, I am very happy indeed. So this is the release scheduled for May 12th, 2020. The film is The Great Escape. Next, scheduled for release May 19th, 2020. This is Spy Number 1031 from 2018. The filmmaker is Paul Dano, and the film is Wildlife. Wildlife. So this is a film uh, from the United States. This is a film that is from 2018. This is one that I have heard about from a number of friends and viewers, but I have not seen. And as some of you may know, I am very bad when it comes to watching recent releases and recent releases from the past five years or so. And uh, this is one film that I haven't seen, so I am very much uh, looking forward to this. I, I have heard a lot of, uh, of uh, wonderful things about this film, how emotionally powerful this film is, how uh, a kind of uh, a f how this film can affect the viewer in a very deep 
and profoundly powerful way. And so I anticipate this film to have a, a quite an emotional resonance uh, based on those uh, comments that I've received from, from uh, other friends and viewers. So uh, I'm... I, I cannot wait. And uh, this is indicated as being the directorial, the directorial debut of Paul Dano. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to what it is he has to say as an artist uh, behind the camera, because he's also well known for his work in front of the camera, as you know. I should point out that the artwork indicates uh, well, it, the artwork is really great because it's uh, indicated as uh, it's a new cover by Duncan Hanna. And it's one of those in, it's instances where we have the the artwork in the middle, and then we have the the names of the uh, the stars in the film, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Carrie, Carrie Mulligan, Jake Gyllenhaal, and we have the the picture art in the center, and then wildlife, and then on the bottom it's really interesting. We have directed by Paul Dano, and then screenplay play by Paul Dano and Zoe Kazan. So we have an instance here uh, where uh, not only is the director's name featured, but also the screenplay writers are also featured, uh, which is an interesting little detail. It's not common in Criterion releases, I don't think, but uh, it's, I think, uh, I understand that with this film, uh, it's, it, it's kind of a significant thing, and I, I can appreciate how the uh, people at Criterion and also the, the filmmakers might want to highlight this particular uh, aspect of the film. Uh, so uh, with that, my friends, the Criterion release here seems to be uh, a new K digital master with 5.1 uh, surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack on the Blu-ray. Plus we have new interviews with director Paul Dano and screenwriter Zoe Kazan and then actress Carrie Mulligan and Jake Gyllenhaal, cinematographer Diego Garcia, uh, production designer Akin McKenzie and co costume designer Amanda Ford. And the new conversation of, on the film's post-production with Dano and editor Matthew Hannum and composer David Lang. And then film at Lincoln Center conversation from 2018 between Dano and novelist Richard Ford about the film's source material. Plus an essay by critic Mark Harris. Now it seems to me that uh, everything here is indicated as being new. Uh, except for the film at Lincoln Center conversation from 2018. But uh, I'm not sure as to the... Uh, past release history of this film, uh, but in any event, it looks like Criterion is giving us a, a film presentation with a lot of packed new uh, features. So I'm very much excited for this and uh, what this presentation has in store for all of us. So uh, this is the film Wildlife, again from 2018, filmmaker Paul Dano. So uh, my friends who are uh, who know this film and who have championed this film and who have recommended this film to me in, in um, you know, a month's past, uh, I'm very happy that this is emerging in the Criterion Collection. So I look forward to this, which is scheduled for release May 19th, 2020. Next, also scheduled for release May 19th, 2020, this is a surprising announcement. I'm so happy that the Criterion made this announcement, which is for Spine 1028 from the United States. This is from 1940. The filmmaker is Dorothy Arzner. This is the film Dance, Girl, Dance. Now, as I said, I had no idea that Criterion was going to announce it, and Criterion does this. It, every, almost every announcement, there's at least one or two films that just come totally unexpectedly out of the blue like this, and they are so wonderful. Uh, Criterion is so wonderful for doing this, and this is no exception to that. Uh, I'm also very happy about this because this is in many ways a kind of... of uh, it's, it's an interesting... Uh, film in terms of its subject matter given the time that it was made and I think that is a testament to the fact that we are dealing with a very uh, uh, fascinating and intelligent filmmaker in Dorothy Arzner and I'm so happy that uh, this film is going to be released like this so hopefully uh, this release from the Criterion Collection will uh, provide all of us with a, yet another opportunity to uh, explore this filmmaker and to see what it is uh, she was trying to do and the significance of her work uh, included in which of course is Dance Girl Dance. And so I am 
uh, quite excited actually by this release. Uh, very excited, and I'm happily surprised. And it's I think a yet another indication of what Criterion is trying to do and how it's trying to uh, widen its uh, its scope in, in many ways. And so I am so thrilled, so thrilled for this. Uh, incidentally, the artwork is by uh, Jody uh, Hugel. I hope I got that pronounced correctly. And it, it has, of course, uh, featuring, I think, Maureen O'Hara and Lucille Ball. And then we have this wonderful font, Dance Girl Dance, which has a nice uh, Hollywoodish uh, feel to it. It evokes that feeling. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's, I mean, these are uh, the, the main characters of the film, so it's a very significant uh, artistic rendition of the of the. Uh, the essence of the film itself. Uh, so this is the film Dance Girl Dance. Now, uh, the special features are indicated as being a new restored 4K digital transfer with uncompressed monorail soundtrack on the Blu-ray. You know, I think this film had been released on DVD uh, maybe some years back. Again, I'm not so sure on the on my release history of this, but um, uh, uh, it, in any event, it's great to have this uh, with a, what's purported to be a new 4K digital transfer, so I'm looking forward to that very much. And then a new introduction by critic B. Ruby Rich, and then new selected scene commentary featuring film historian, historian Carl uh, Beauchamp, and then we have an essay by critic Sheila, Sheila, uh, Sheila O'Malley. Excuse me. This is great. So we have a new introduction, and then we have a commentary track wonderful absolutely wonderful you know i think uh, if uh, the i'm i'm not sure how much information will be provided by the introduction it says introduction but sometimes these introductions can vary from in length from you know, a few minutes to sometimes more so um, this might be a brief sort of interview from uh, be Ruby Rich, but uh, even so, uh, any information is, is of course, uh, very much appreciated. But the fact that there is going to be a new selected scene commentary is very welcome indeed. Now, I should say that it says selected scene, so I don't know exactly what that means. That could mean it's just a commentary for certain portions of the film and not the entirety of the film itself, and it might just be sp scene specific. And so, I don't know if we'd be able to get any information about Dorothy Arzner herself, uh, but it might just be sticking to the film itself. I don't know. We'll have to see because I haven't heard this commentary and it's indicated as being new. So I don't know what this commentary has to offer. But uh, I think uh, even a partial commentary is better than no commentary at all. And as I said, I think this film and its background and the filmmaker, I think, affords us with many opportunities to want to learn more. And I think uh, hopefully the commentary and the introduction will provide this, as well as the essay. Uh, these essays by Criterion, I've always said it, uh, I've said it many times and I'll continue to say it, they are really, uh, in many ways, sort of, um, the lifeblood, if you will, of a lot of these releases because they have so much information and it's so well packed and I, I rely on the essays uh, uh, quite extensively uh, for all of the releases I should say and so uh, I look forward to that very much uh, but I, I once again I can't just I can't explain enough just how surprised and excited I am for this and so uh, my friends this is scheduled for release May 19th 2020. The film is Dance, Girl, Dance. Next, scheduled for release May 26th, 2020. This is scheduled for release on Spine 1029. This is from 1970, also from the United States. The filmmaker is John Cassavetes. The film is Husbands. Wow. This is also something that I had not been expecting. And uh, I, the Husbands was one of those films that had not been in the Criterion Collection. I think it had been uh, somewhat conspicuous. You know, the Criterion Collection is really great because there are a number of films by John Cassavetes that are already in the collection. But there are a select few that aren't. One of those up to now has been the film Husbands. And so if you wanted to see Husbands, uh, I mean, you could rely, for instance, on this particular DVD 
a non-criterion DVD, which I have right here, uh, complete with its own. Uh, this is one I bought in New York, so uh, I value this very much for a number of reasons. But uh, this is a film that I, I, this was actually one of the first Cassavetes films that I saw growing up, and I was immediately enthralled by it. It, it took me no time to get into it because it was just, it was, it packed a wallop immediately for me. And uh, as I got older, it became uh, much more powerfully resonant. And I think because maybe I could see myself uh, getting closer in age, perhaps, to the characters that are portrayed in this film. Uh, in any event, my friends, I, 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 can, I really want to stress how brilliant uh, I personally think this film is in the context of Cassavetti's filmography, at least how I see it. And this is, for me, one of um, his, uh, one of my favorite films by Cassavetti. It could perhaps be my favorite Cassavetti's film. I haven't really thought about that yet, but uh, I say that because I... I I discovered it early in life, and it still has uh, remained with me uh, up to now. And so, to see this in the Criterion Collection like this, I'm so so happy, I'm really really happy. Um, I should point out that the the cover art here is credited as being by Eric Skillman, and I I do like it because it it does have a similar feel to the uh, five films. Uh, box set that we saw earlier. It does have a similar look to it. So I, I like how it seems to be trying to perhaps uh, achieve some kind of visual consistency, let's put it that way, uh, with uh, the the five films box set. At least in, in, in not completely, of course, but just in terms of a sense or feel, perhaps. So I, I really like that very much. Um, and then talking about the, the uh, features here, we have a new 4K digital restoration with uncompressed Monroe soundtrack on the Blu-ray. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Then we have audio commentary from 2009 featuring critic Marshall Fine. And I, I wanna say that it's probably gonna be the same commentary that we saw on this non-criterion DVD because this also has a commentary track. Um, uh, so I'm assuming it's gonna be the same commentary track. And then there are new interviews with producers, uh, with producer Al Rubin and actor Jenny Runacre. So um, new, so this is uh, great. And then we have new video essay by film filmmaker Daniel Raim, featuring audio recordings of John Cassavetes in his own words, exploring the actor-director's spirited approach to acting. Again, these two features indicated as being new, so wonderful, wonderful news. Um, it's always great when we have new supplements uh, from Criterion. And then we have uh, the story of husbands, a tribute to John Cassavetes, which is a, a kind of a, a, a little bit of a making of or, or, some, or a little bit of a documentary like that. Now, this is probably going to be the same documentary which we actually have here as a feature on this DVD. Uh, if so, great, great. Plus an episode of The Dick Cavett Show from 1970 featuring uh, Cassavetes Gazzara and actor Peter Falk. Now I've seen this episode. I think one can see it on YouTube if you do a quick search, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I saw it because uh, if, you, if you haven't seen John Cassavetes being interviewed on shows like this, I mean, you're in for one you're in for a, a real entertaining time because the way they carry on, it's just, I, mean, I don't want to say too much, but it's really, you have to see it to believe it in many respects. It's, it's, um, uh, it, it's just a, a great indication of, of uh, these people and uh, their energy and their vitality. It, it's, it's really lovely to see. So I'm glad that this will be included as being a, a special feature on this, uh, on this uh, planned release. And then a trailer plus an essay by filmmaker Andrew uh, Bujalski. So wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I am thrilled to bits about this news. I couldn't be happier. Uh, I, as I say, this is a film that is deeply resonant, and I think it holds a lot of power uh, for me as I find myself uh, approaching 
the same or similar age uh, as uh, these characters. And so uh, I think it, it has a lot of power that way. But it, it, I think, as I said before, it, it was a film that always had a power uh, to me, even when I was younger. And so I, I do want to emphasize that for, for those of you out there who are uh, maybe uh, younger than I am. I think this has a great... Uh, uh, this has uh, the potential for having a really uh, deep effect and it can be a really affecting uh, viewing so I would strongly recommend it to anyone uh, out there who is interested but has yet to see the film Husbands by John Cassavetes once again scheduled for release May 26, 2020 for Spine 1029 this is the film by John Cassavetes Husbands Schedule for release May 26, 2020. This is for Spine 1030 from the United States. Uh, the filmmaker is Martin Scorsese. This is a release that's called Scorsese Shorts. And the short films that are going to be included are 4K digital restorations, new restorations of the five films as follows. Italian American. American Boy, The Big Shave, It's Not Just You, Murray, and What's a Nice Girl Like You Doing in a Place Like This? And all I have to say is, wow. Absolutely wow. Now, this is a film that, or this is a release, I should say, that uh, I think has been, this was re announced uh, earlier. And so this isn't any... Uh, surprise in a sense because this had already been in the news in, uh, in in terms of planned releases in the future it's just a matter of when but here we go we have this release uh, and it's coming in May 2020 wonderful now I should say that this work Scorsese shorts it does have uh, well, it is, in a sense, a Laserdisc upgrade. Now, let me explain. The Criterion Collection made a lot of releases in Laserdisc back in the day. But also, there is a connection between the Criterion Collection and something that's called the Voyager Company. So those of you who know the Criterion Collection history knows that the Voyager Company has a very uh, direct relationship with the Criterion Collection Laserdisc lineup, and then therefore, by extension, the Criterion Collection as we know it now. So the Voyager Company is in many ways uh, uh, very closely tied to the Criterion Collection Laserdisc catalog and also, therefore, the Criterion Collection now. Under the Voyager Company name, there were a number of Laserdiscs that were released. Not just Laserdiscs, too. There were also other uh, different media formats of, of releases that were made. But among those media formats was the Laserdisc format. And included in the Voyager Company Laserdisc lineup were a number of titles that we see uh, in the current um, in the current Criterion Collection catalog right now. Um, not many, but a few. Uh, I think For All Mankind, I think, comes to mind immediately. Uh, but the Voyager Company Laserdisc lineup is a very interesting lineup, and I've, I think I've made a video about it, uh, I think a, a couple years ago, in fact, about the Voyager Laserdiscs. So it's really fascinating. One of the Voyager Company Laserdiscs is, in fact, this one which is three by Scorsese. And the three by Scorsese in question are Italian American, The Big Shave, and American Boy. And so this release was one that was made by the Voyager Company. So in a sense, the Scorsese shorts release is kind of a, um, it's kind of a, uh, a laser disc upgrade, but of course we have the the inclusion of the two short films that weren't included on this prior Voyager Company release, namely "It's Not Just You, Murray," and "What's a Nice Girl Like You Doing It in a Place Like This." So, this makes this new Criterion release, on the one hand, a laser disc upgrade, but on the other hand, a really exciting new release in in um, the best sense of that word, and so. I am just thrilled to bits over the moon about this release. Now, let me just say that the cover art is credited as being by Sister Hyde. 
Wow. Wow. Look at that. Ah, so evocative. And New York is, of course, I'm assuming this is New York, but uh, uh, New York is, of course, very important to Scorsese's career and his filmography, and in particular, his his early career and his short films. Um, and uh, um, he has a close connection with New York University, and these short films, I think, are very much a part of that. And so to have this cover art like this is, is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, and then, in, of course, the... Uh, we have not only these films, but also a new conversation between director Martin Scorsese and film critic Farron Smith Nemi. Uh, those of you who have seen uh, past videos of mine on this channel will know that I am a very big fan of her work. Every time she uh, appears on a Criterion supplement, I am uh, very happy because we know that we can get uh, so much information presented in a clear, concise way. Wonderful. And it's a conversation between her and uh, Martin Scorsese himself. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. And then there's a new discussion among filmmakers Ari Aster and uh, Josh and Benny Safdie. So Ari Aster and uh, the Safdie brothers. Uh, really great. So I'm, I, I don't know what this will mean exactly, but I'm assuming... Uh, Ari Aster and the Safdie brothers are fans of Scorsese and they'll probably be talking about uh, how these films uh, maybe affected them and how they uh, how they inspired them and their filmmaking right now. So uh, there's that. And then there is the more apost um, more exclamation mark. And so we can uh, check back with this uh, release when it comes and see what else is going to be offered. But we can expect other things to come with the special features uh, together with what's already being listed. So if that's the case, great. Plus an essay by uh, film critic Bilga Abiri and then various materials from Scorsese's archive, whatever that means. But uh, it looks like there is going to be a lot already plus more, much, much more. So I think we should be very excited about this. This looks like it's going to be a big one, a really, really big one. You know, Scorsese does have a, uh, Scorsese works do have a kind of relationship already with the Criterion Collection. Uh, Last Temptation of Christ comes to mind, um, uh, Age of Innocence, of course. Um, there's The Irishman, which was also uh, indicated in a recent news report as being released by the Criterion Collection maybe later this year. And then we have other laser discs uh, from Criterion uh, f from uh, years past, of course, but Taxi Driver and Raging Bull, etc. Um, and then Scorsese also has a link with Martin Scorsese's World Cinema Project, uh, the two box sets, etc. So uh, there is a, a, a connection between the Criterion Collection and Martin Scorsese. And so to have that connection further solidified with a release like this is just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And to and the, the films themselves are, um, I mean, they are so uniquely personal and quite quirky in many aspects. But, uh, you know, I think that is a, a really great attribute and trait. And I think that's a trait that uh, can be described uh, about Scorsese's best works in terms of his feature film output. Uh, and to see him at work... Uh, unfettered and uh, just free to do essentially what it is he wants to do uh, based on his own artistic uh, uh, imagination and will and just sheer uh, drive as a, a young man uh, during this time in the 60s and 70s in New York is just a sight to behold. And so I, I'm just so happy for this and I'm uh, just... I, I'm. I'm very, very happy. So uh, this is the release that is scheduled for May 26, 2020 for Spine 1030. This is Scorsese Shorts. Okay, my friends, so that's it for my general comments on these releases. So it looks to be a very exciting, packed month of May. We are getting a couple of films which I indicated as being Laserdisc upgrades. And then we are getting a, a number of surprises 
and we are getting a really significant uh, film or set that was recently out of print. And so this is yet another stellar, stellar month from Criterion. Criterion continues to surprise me, and I'm, I am just over the moon, absolutely over the moon. 2020 is shaping up to be a really brilliant year for Criterion indeed. And I'm just, I am, uh, I'm Dance Girl Dance. That was a big surprise for me. And Husbands too, that was a really big surprise for me. As well as the, uh, I mean, I had been hoping also for the the reemergence of the Eric Romero set, but I didn't expect it to come this soon. So I'm, I'm just so thrilled about this. And then plus, of course, um, uh, wildlife is one that I haven't seen, so I, I'm looking forward to this very much. And it's very timely because this has been a film that I have heard about from uh, other friends and, and uh, viewers. And then, of course, there is The the Great Escape, which is a, a, an older Criterion Laserdisc. And plus Scorsese Shorts, which also is, in a sense, a past Laserdisc release as well, with more, much more, of course. So uh, this is a, a wonderful, wonderful Oh, gosh, this is great. Perhaps if I could say something, I maybe it does seem a little bit, how should I put it, United States film heavy. Um, but perhaps, uh, I mean, a, apart from the Eric Romero set, of course, every other film is uh, a United States film or, or set of films, if, if I'm not mistaken. And so uh, on the one hand, this is really great. On the other hand, um, it hopefully we can see other months where we might uh, see films uh, from other regions of the world represented, of course. But uh, that's not to take away from anything uh, from these particular films announced in May. I think this is a fine lineup, and it's uh, one that I think we can all be excited for. Uh, and hopefully, it's we can um, all of us can find at least one film, maybe more, that we'd be very excited for. So, uh, my friends, what do you think? Are you um, interested in these releases? What do you have to say? Are you excited? Uh, is there any particular release that you are excited about? Uh, if you want, please feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what it is you have to say. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. So until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. So until we meet again, my friends, cheers.